our previous video, I mentioned that shortly after we arrived here in Cuenca, Ecuador, there was a blackout. Also, there was a, very recently a like blackout in part of the city. And so the lights had been out in some of the businesses. Now the blackout is actually not an isolated incident. And in this video, we're gonna talk about exactly what is causing these blackouts. Before we do that, I just wanna say real quick, thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So I also figured out uh, why exactly there was a blackout yesterday. Turns out it's actually scheduled. Uh, most of the, uh, most of the, well, most of Ecuador really gets a lot of their power from um, hydroelectric dams. And Cuenca is, uh, is no exception. They get power from hydroelectric. And there's been a drought here recently. So the, uh, the water levels are low and it's preventing uh, some of the hydroelectric dams from functioning like really efficiently. You can actually hear really loud generators. There are a lot of businesses that are running generators to keep the power on. And so basically like in different parts of uh, the city for you know a few hours like in one area of the city they have the power out and then they schedule another blackout in like other parts for for like the next few hours so like for example my uh my neighborhood where my uh where i'm staying was blacked out luckily it was while we were out on the streets so it wasn't that big a deal but definitely seen uh some you walk by for a few blocks and like the lights are out like here, we're in the part where there is a blackout today. The uh, street lights are out and uh, these businesses lights are out, but people seem to be getting by, you know. Remember this was happening in California back uh, in the United States back a few decades ago too with rolling blackouts. So people, people adjust and they figure it out. And when your power is only out for maybe a few hours, it's not really that big a deal. It's inconvenient for sure. And certainly for some like restaurants, um, it's, it's a little tricky. And for businesses that use uh, credit card processing and get a lot of credit card purchases, it's a, it's a bit of an issue, but uh, you know, people are getting by. So even though there was a blackout again today, I decided I still wanted to explore the city. And my plan was to just walk away from the city center, down the hill, across the river, and see exactly how far the blackout went. So that's exactly what we did. We walked down and saw how far away we had to walk before we started seeing businesses that had power again. Of course, before we did that, we noticed these guys right here, the police auxiliary band, and we had to check them out. The police, the police band is out playing in front of the uh, Santuario Mariano. I've actually heard these guys before out on the streets. Not gonna lie, they're pretty good. It's a pretty good uh, police community outreach. Right, get a band. Come out on the street, stand in front of the church, play some, uh, play some upbeat music. It's pretty cool. The old part of the city you can see behind me, the historical part, is actually up. Like it's raised up sort of on top of a, like a little hill. And uh, it's built up. I would imagine it was built up like this for fortification back in the day. But as you can see, when you get down by the river, down here, there's usually like stairs to go down so you can cross the river and get over into the rest of the city where they've expanded out past the historical center over the years. But it provides for, even on a cloudy day like this, some pretty cool views out in the distance. You can see all the way out to the mountains and uh, can't really see it, but in every direction, you know, like if we were basically on top of even this uh, little three-story building here, you'd probably be able to see the mountains out on the horizon in every direction. So, very cool. Very cool city to be walking around to, uh, you know, to see all of that. It's just like, you wake up in the morning, decide to go for a walk, 
for me at least it's very uh it's very different it's a very different feel and i really enjoy it looks like the blackout today is a little more widespread than i thought uh over there you can see the stairs going up back up to the old historical part of the city and here we are at the river so i came down the hill decided to go across the river and it looks like all the uh Electricity is out across the river too, so it's a little different than it was yesterday. Yesterday it seemed like there were only small neighborhoods that were blacking out for maybe like an hour or two, but uh, I was I was walking around at a different time in the afternoon, so uh, maybe it's different. I don't know. I don't know exactly how they're doing it, but I did read an article uh, saying that this is why this is why there are blackouts is because of the uh, the drought and the hydroelectric dams. But we'll go across the river here and we'll keep walking around and just see what we find. We walked a little ways on this side of the river and uh, it's still all blacked out over here too. Uh, but I did manage to find a restaurant and uh, got a little something to eat. Uh, I was going to take a picture of it, but um, it was kind of dark in there because of the blackout. And uh, also I ate half of it before I realized that I hadn't taken a picture. So I'll tell you what it was. It was uh, seco de pollo, which is like a stewed chicken uh, with some rice and some beans. I got a coffee with it and a bottle of water. And all of that was like three bucks. Um, I really like the food so far in Ecuador. It's definitely not like um, as complex or flashy as like the food was in Peru, uh, but it's like very simple and you could find like restaurants that have real simple but very tasty dishes, usually like some sort of a stewed meat with rice and beans and maybe a salad. Sometimes it'll come with a soup uh, and uh, you know, you get a drink or something. It's usually like three, four bucks really cheap and um, really filling and delicious. So anyway, we're actually right here by the Universidad de Cuenca. That could also be like why there are like so many um, like really affordable restaurants around here because, you know, broke college students and all. But even over here, we walk around in this neighborhood on the other side of the river outside of the historical center there's still like old churches over here too go over here and see what this church is there's a little sign over there that says this is the plaza san roque and that would make this church the uh parish of san roque parroquia san roque just like a little neighborhood church Really cool to see, you know, a very, very old church like this being the little neighborhood church for this little area. I think we're gonna head down past the university here. If we walk down this street a little ways, we'll end up near the uh, stadium, Estadio of uh, Cuenca, I guess. I would imagine it's where like the Cuenca football team plays nah, I'm not sure but you know if you're in South America it's a good guess that a soccer team plays at the stadium anyway you can walk down there see if that area over there by the stadium is uh, is blacked out too it's a pretty quiet neighborhood back here the uh, university it's like just on the other side of this wall on the left some buildings back here some nice houses and uh, seems pretty quiet. I don't know if that's just because of the time of day or if this neighborhood is more of a quiet neighborhood, but I've noticed that Cuenca, you know, because it is a smaller city, it's a lot more chill, it's a lot quieter. Um, definitely, <laughs> definitely a change of pace after our stay in Lima, which um, I really enjoyed. I did really enjoy staying in Lima, but man, that city, Lima is chaos, like all the time. Um, I remember actually on my trip, <laughs> the Uber ride to the airport in the morning, it was like, the Uber picked me up at six o'clock in the morning, because my flight was pretty early. And uh, in the neighborhood where I was staying, there was already starting to be some traffic at six in the morning. And by like 6.45, by the time we got to the airport, Ooh, man, the traffic was just insane. Super thick traffic. Everybody honking. 
very, very, um, you know, typical Lima traffic. But uh, after, you know, four or five weeks of that, it's pretty nice to come to a place like Cuenca where it's uh, a lot quieter, a lot more chill. And, uh, you know, that's not to say it's like, it's boring or anything here in Cuenca. It's definitely not. There's a lot of stuff to see, a lot of stuff to do. It's very lively, but it's, uh, you know, one-tenth, less than one-tenth of the population of Lima, which means one-tenth of the people, one-tenth of the cars, um, you know, so definitely uh, a change of pace, a welcome change of pace. We made our way down the end of that street, and there's like a major street here. The uh, old historical center of the city is up that way, about four or five blocks, I think. Then the other direction, the stadium, I think, is about a couple blocks down there. But there is a traffic signal here that's got, uh, it's turned on. So looks like they got electricity for the traffic signals here. And I could see about two blocks up, there's a traffic signal on too. So who knows? We may have found either the edge of the blackout zone or perhaps the blackout is starting to end and they're starting to turn the electricity on uh, in different places around the city. But uh, we'll see. Actually, you know what? I think I want to walk back the other way, head over towards the stadium, see what's going on over there. Well, I actually got a little turned around, which tends to happen to me when I'm exploring a new city especially. But also I've noticed, um, specifically around here, there aren't a lot of street signs. You get to a corner, and there's like no street signs. It's kind of like you either know or you don't know. And if you don't know, then you better ask somebody. But uh, back that direction where I said was back towards the historical center actually isn't. This direction that we're going now is towards uh, out towards the stadium. And we're going to go down there and check it out and check out that area. But back there where I saw that they had traffic lights, uh, that's actually going towards the outskirts, further further towards the outskirts of the city. Although as I walk past this mattress store, they have electricity. This store here has a giant screen on the side, and they have electricity. And the traffic signal up here is on. So uh, who knows? Maybe we're coming. Maybe we're coming out of the blackout. Look across the street, and it's hard to tell if they have. No, actually, look, I see a restaurant over there. It looks like they have lights on, so maybe uh, maybe we're coming out of it. Like I mentioned, these are all planned things, and they're only temporary. It's not just like uh, something went wrong and, uh, you know, the, black, the part of the city blacked out. Like, uh, that, that actually happened to us. Uh, I didn't really make a video about this. Some of the stuff I filmed for other videos happened during this, but when I was in Mendoza, in Argentina, there was a big blackout. It had been super hot there, like super hot for weeks in a row. Big heat wave, and just the load of everybody running their air conditioners and all of that. There was a cascading failure, and a bunch of stuff blacked out, like the whole not just the city, but uh, other cities too in the province blacked out. Big, big blackout. That lasted for like, I don't know, about eight hours. And uh, I remember I was thinking about making a video about it, but then it was just like, what all I was doing honestly that day was I was just riding around on the bus because uh, it was insanely hot. It was like 100, oh, over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It was like 40 degrees Celsius. Um, and the buses are air conditioned so i seriously just rode around on the bus to different neighborhoods basically to just sort of like see how far the blackout went and i remember we rode like all the way down i don't know like probably like an hour south of the center of the city where we were staying and it was still blacked out down there too but uh yeah it's a weird day i don't know why i'm talking about that now in ecuador but it happened anyway We'll keep heading down this way. We'll make our way down to uh, over by the stadium, and uh, hopefully this will be the end. Yeah, this this uh, pharmacy over here, they have their power on. Hopefully this is the end of the blackout for today, at least. Maybe for this uh, for this neighborhood, maybe for the whole city. Who knows? Never really know.
And honestly, when you're traveling and uh, you're sort of unfamiliar city, you just gotta sort of, all right, all right. Someone's angry. You just gotta sort of take things as they come, right? You gotta be flexible. If there's a blackout for a few hours, well, just figure out something to do, you know? Go outside, take a walk, get your camera out, film some stuff, make a video. Just gotta figure something to do. And that's what we're doing. Well, we're over here by the stadium. You can see the uh, lights right there sticking up out of the stadium back behind this sort of glass building, this big glass building. And uh, looks like the lights are on. There's a motorcycle shop here. It's got its lights on. Over that glass building over there, which I'm not quite sure what it is. Maybe a bank or something. Some sort of office building. They got their lights on over there too. So I think uh, we may have uh, we may have seen the end, the end of the uh, of the blackout. I don't know. Am I ready to declare that? I guess I am. With my limited knowledge of the situation, I am ready to declare that the blackout is now over. The blackout was over for that day, but lo and behold, the next day there was a blackout once again. But I did notice that the electric tram was running even during the blackout. So we decided to take that all the way out to the end of the line to see the outskirts of the city and what it was like out there. All right, we're out again today on the streets, Cuenca. Typical Cuenca, late morning. It's cool, it's breezy, it's cloudy. It's pretty typical Cuenca weather. And uh, unfortunately today it's uh, blackout again. And I've actually, uh, let's go back. I've actually learned a little bit more about uh, the blackouts. Um, they seem to be more regular. I figured out the schedule basically from about 10.30 in the morning till about 2.30 in the afternoon. That's when everything's blacked out. So it's really only four hours in the middle of the day. And uh, I don't know exactly how long this is going to be going on for. I've been reading the news and seeing uh, some announcements like from the, uh, the government, President Noboa, uh, and they hopefully they say that this is only going to be for a week, but you never know. And another thing that I've seen interestingly is in addition to uh, having this blamed on the drought, which of course is causing, uh, is causing the reservoirs to run low, the power of the hydroelectric dams. Uh, it's also being blamed on corruption and potentially sabotage. The president, Daniel Noboa, made a statement that he believed that some of the equipment was sabotaged and also that, uh, that uh, the, like the Ministry of Energy, there's corruption in the Ministry of Energy. He's actually called on the, uh, ministry of Ener the Minister of Energy here to resign. So uh, it's a little spicy, a little spicier than just a drought. Um, and normally in situations where uh, there was like a power shortage here in Ecuador, they would actually be able to import um, uh, like energy from um, Colombia. And Colombia has actually in the past exported energy to Ecuador. But unfortunately, uh, Colombia is in the same situation as is Ecuador right now with the drought. Uh, the drought caused by El Nino is causing major problems in Colombia as well. So not just uh, like water shortages, but also shortages in energy because they rely on hydroelectric uh, energy as well in Colombia. So all around the whole region, it's kind of a, a tricky situation. But today, I figure we're gonna go and try and explore the city, of course, as we always do. And one of the things that I want to do that I haven't done yet is get a public transportation card. Motivilizate card, I think it's called here. I don't know, it's a little red card that I think works on the buses. And I'm not sure about it, but there is a tram that runs through Cuenca on the, uh, like, on the surface. It's like a street tram. And I think the card may work for that tram, but it may also not. I've gotten mixed, mixed uh, research, like mixed information from the research I've done. So uh, apparently there's an office like right around here 
Actually, I think I just walked past it. Apparently there's an office right here where you can buy uh, the card and we'll find out if it works on the tram and the bus. I know it works for the buses. We'll find out if it works on the tram. And if it does work on the tram, I kind of want to hop on the tram and just take a ride because it goes through the city and it goes to a lot of parts of the city that I haven't been to yet. I want to check out and see uh, what there is to see. So let's do that. All right, so we got a card for the bus, buses, but not for the tram. The tram is a separate card and uh, you actually can only buy it if you're like a Ecuador citizen. You need a cedula. Cedula is like the national ID. And uh, you can't buy it if you're a tourist. But if you want to take the tram as a tourist, you can buy like a single ticket at one of the stops for like a single ride. So you pay by ride. But the bus card I did buy, they told me it's $30 or 30 cents per ride, which is uh, pretty cheap. And I added uh, a few extra centavos onto the, uh, onto the card so I can have some rides. And uh, actually over in this part of the city, it looks like it's not blacked out over here. So the, uh, the timing from 10.30 to 4 or 4.30 or I mean 2.30, 10.30 to 2.30 I think I said. That may actually be uh, just for like the part of the neighborhood where I'm staying. Although it looks like some of these businesses here are blacked out. I don't know. I don't really know exactly how it works and where where exactly is blacked out and where isn't and at what times. But along that street that I was just on where uh, where the office was to buy the, uh, the, tr the bus card, that was all had power, had traffic signals. And uh, the office itself, where you buy the, uh, the car, it had signal, like had uh, power as well, so who knows. I'm still not sure about this even now, but the best I can tell is the street that the tram line runs along because the tram is electric. That street and the businesses on that street have electricity during the blackouts, including the office where you purchase your transportation card. Like I said, not 100% sure, but it seems like that's what, that was the case and it would make sense. So the tram here in Cuenca is actually quite nice. It's new. Uh, they have these little screens that let you know what stop is coming up next. As you can see, it's very clean. The seats are quite comfortable, and um, even though it is a little bit pricey, it's $1 per ride, and the $1 gets you 40 minutes, basically, worth of ride time on the tram. Um, it's still uh, very, very clean, very quick, very quiet, and very efficient uh, to get where you need to go. So we decided we'd hop on. We took it out all the way out to the end of the line uh, by the River Tarki. So we hopped on the tram, took it all the way out to the last stop, all the way out on the west side of the city. And uh, the stop is uh, Rio Tarki. But uh, when I got here, I decided to get myself a little coffee and uh, a snack at this place, Pachi's Cafe and Bar, which I just happened to see. And uh, got like one of the fanciest coffees and a uh, piece of chocolate cake that was like swimming in delicious, what was basically, I don't even know what it was. It was called a uh, mojada, to torta mojada, which is like, mojada means wet. Um, so it was like, it was like a chocolate cake that was like uh, soaked in uh, what was basically like really, really rich chocolate milk. Like imagine um, melted chocolate ice cream. And then imagine a chocolate cake soaked in that. It was delicious. But from here, I'm just gonna walk across this major street here because I want to check out, there's a park right by the river here. The river Tarki, Rio Tarki. The neighborhood over here looks a little different, of course, than like the, um, the center where we were, the historical center. It's a lot more uh, suburban-y out here definitely looks a lot more modern and uh, this major throughway here is where the uh, the tram runs once it leaves the center the historical center it runs along this this street here in fact the station is like just up there really nice out here sun came out clouds have parted sun is out in the afternoon 
real nice. Anyway, let's cut down here and see this park. So we came down this street, little side street here, and down a steep hill. Right down at the bottom of this hill, there's a little park, and the river cuts through here. The river Tartki. It's a nice little neighborhood. It's pretty quiet, especially once you get off of that main street back there. A good place to, uh, to go exploring. Yeah, it's a quiet little little neighborhood. Good place to go exploring on a day when the power was out. Although the power is back on, I think it's after. Well, it's after 2:30. So, if my theory was correct that the power comes back on at 2:30, like it has been in the neighborhood where we're staying, at least, then you would think that the power would be back on now at this point. And out here in the uh, sort of outskirts of the city, at the edge of the city, power is on. So, hopefully, it's on everywhere. Here it is, the river, River Tarki. The park has some like little pedestrian trails running through it, bike trails up there, little playground, little mini soccer field slash basketball court, which you see like all over the place. These soccer field bas soccer field basketball court combo, I've seen that all over the place in Ecuador, in neighborhoods around here. And there it is, the river. The River Tarki, and actually, the river flows. Uh, all the rivers from in here they flow like west to east, and if you head that way on the river west for uh, I don't know a while, <laughs> many many kilometers, but you get up into the mountains, and there's the Cajas. Cajas, uh, there's like a national park out there. It's basically a set of big volcanic mountains, and uh, the volcano, the volcanic soil, filters the rainwater that falls on those mountains. So those four rivers basically, they get filtered through the volcanic soils of the Cajas Mountains to the west. And they all flow down here. They flow through the city. And uh, eventually they all sort of like meet up into the Tomebamba River. Which the Tomebamba River is the one that runs like close to the historic center, the one that we've been going across or walking near in a lot of the videos that we've been making around the historic center. And, uh, you know, because of the fact that this water is all filtered through those uh, volcanic soils, and then also because in Cuenca here, they have like a pretty modern um, uh, water treatment system where they use chlorine to treat the water. So you can actually drink the tap water here in Cuenca and uh, it's quite good, it's quite fresh. Uh, I've drank the tap water, I think it tastes pretty good. I had to kind of stop drinking it though just because um, the place where I'm staying uses electricity to pump the water um, into the building. And because there have been these blackouts, uh, there have been times, a lot of the times, where there's just no tap water. And so you I just sort of had to have some bottled water around. So I've been drinking bottled water, but that the tap water is good here, and I've been assured by many people, locals, as well as like research that I've done on the internet that you can drink the tap water here in Cuenca, which is pretty cool because a lot of places in uh, in Ecuador, in a lot of cities, and especially in the rural areas, you can't. If you drink the water, the tap water, um, in places in Ecuador, it's kind of like if you drink the tap water in Lima or in Peru, you'll end up getting a uh, some sort of bacterial infection or parasites or something like that. You definitely don't want that. So, But in Cuenca, you can. You can drink the water. So, because these rivers are, uh, you know, they flow through here, it may, it's what made uh, Cuenca into such a, uh, like a place that's been settled by civilizations for many, many thousands of years because of the access to all of these rivers, because of the flat land, in amongst all of these mountains, um, it makes for a really great spot to put down a settlement. Because the weather was so nice, decided to hop back on the tram. We headed a few stops back towards the center of the city, and we stopped at uh, a park that was right next to the river Yanuncai, one of the other rivers that runs through the Cajas and into Cuenca. 
Got off at our stop right here. You can see the uh, tram station there behind me. Our tram taking off into the distance. And right here, right next to this stop, there's a little park and uh, the river runs through here. This is the river Yanungkai. Yeah, you can see it right here. This is a bridge right here going across it. River Yanunkai. Here it is. There's a little park here. It's got a nice little walking trail. Head down to the park. There's like a little playground over there I can see and a little soccer field that's right next to the river, which is really cool. The river's lined with all these big, beautiful trees. It's nice. It's a nice little park for this neighborhood. And it's nice to, to like, uh, explore around this neighborhood a little bit. Like I said, getting outside of the uh, historical center where we usually have been walking around is kind of nice. I will say also out here, as much as I like the historical center, there's a lot of traffic and there's a lot of like buses that run through there. And because the streets are very narrow and the buildings sort of they close in on you. It feels a little claustrophobic, but also it gets very like polluted. There's like lots of exhaust fumes. So when you're walking along the streets, you're just sort of like breathing in exhaust. And out here, the air feels uh, a lot cleaner, which is kind of nice. Definitely kind of nice. Let's head down to this park here and take a closer look at the river. Down here by the shore of the river. And uh, yeah, it's really nice. Nice trees, nice flowing river. This is a nice little park. And right around here, I've noticed there are like some like mid rise, pretty nice looking apartments or condos and other ones that are under construction. Like you can see one next to that and another one over there that's under construction. And then there was one over there by the, uh, by the train stop where we were too. And then over in here, mixed in amongst some of these like more like low sort of single family row houses, you see like some multi-story apartment and condo buildings. So nice, nice mixed use neighborhood with nice little walking trails, public transportation access on the tram to easily get into the center of the city. It's a pretty nice neighborhood, honestly. I could definitely see myself like staying here in this neighborhood if we hadn't stayed in the uh, historical center in that neighborhood. You know, sitting here in this park, right next to the river here with all the eucalyptus trees. It's a nice, cool, cool day, although it's warm in the sun. You know, the breeze is cool, the shade is cool, but the sun is warm. And the air is clean and crisp. And this is a nice park right by the river. Cuenca seems extremely peaceful and very safe. And when you're in a neighborhood like this, and just sort of hanging out in the park and watching all these families just like hanging out with their kids, people playing soccer over there, people hanging out down by the river and just sitting and relaxing. I mean, it's a, it seems like a very nice place. I think that's gonna be it for the video. Uh, that's it, that's it for the video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.